Well, we ran into a little problem, guys. So y'all gonna have to work with me a little bit this morning. It's on here pretty tight. As y'all can see, I'm using my little tank. Because last night, the heater quit working again. And I came out here and I could see the frost line down to about right here. So I'm down to about a quarter of a tank of propane. And this one right here did that a couple of weeks ago. And I have found out that the heater don't like to work when it's down to a quarter of a tank. Now I'm using a lot more propane than what I did last year. I guess because I'm here full time now. And I'm running the heater around the clock on some of the days. So. It's causing a little bit of an issue for me. And we still got some cold nights ahead of us. And. I'm not so much worried about me, but Margarita is coming over tomorrow for a couple of days for the holidays. So I got to get some propane in this house because I can't have her freezing. And propane ain't cheap either. with me, work with me. All right, guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are already out here getting it on the mountain. I got the foreman down here. <sighs> She's always on me. She makes me work even when I don't want to work. Come on. Yeah, so apparently I'm using a lot more propane with that Mr. Heater than I anticipated. I can't believe it uses as much propane as it does. I have checked for leaks and everything. I do not have leaks. It's just it burns a lot whenever it's running full time so uh, i wished i had a wood stove honestly but i don't think that it's the right decision to just buy any kind of wood stove right now and install it in the cabin when i have to tear this cabin completely apart for the renovation this spring so i think this is going to be a necessary evil and i'm just going to have to try to monitor running it a little bit um full time kind of uh, shut it on and off a little bit because there's only two settings you got high and low and that's it um i wish there was like a real low setting because honestly it gets a little hot in there running at high and i got to open the windows a little bit so i'm thinking for now on what i'm going to do is just shut it off let it cool down a little bit and then bring it back up for the time being till i figure out another solution because it's like 77 dollars or something to fill up each one of those tanks and between the gas and the generator and that propane, if it's going out that fast, it's only been about a month. So you're looking at about $140 there and about $600 for fuel for the generators. That's a lot of money a month. So, But we're going to be making some changes here real soon. 
I was on the phone a lot yesterday, uh, lining some things up. Uh, nothing's for sure yet, so as soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. But I do have some plans to make some major, major changes here around the cabin coming here real soon if I can pull everything off. So, uh, speaking of that, there's about to be another big change here at the cabin. I'm going to show you all what I did yesterday. Let me take you off the stand here. All right. Let's take a walk. Let's walk and talk. Come on. Uh, it's starting to warm up nicely. On the positive, though, it's supposed to heat up a little bit towards the end of this week. This cold snap's supposed to go away for a little while, Whew, which will save me some money. Man, isn't it a gorgeous morning? Look at that, guys. As you can see, there ain't many leaves on the trees anymore. But I went to Russellville yesterday because I needed to get gas. Uh, when I dropped Margarita off at her car, we got up early in the morning, and I went ahead and headed to Russellville and got a whole bunch of gas because gas is a lot cheaper in Russellville than it, was, than it is in my area, probably by about 20, 30 cent a gallon. And when you're buying as many gallons as me, 20 or 30 uh, cent on a gallon, whew, it makes a big, big, big difference. Uh, well, as you can see, I just walked through the generator room. If you haven't checked that video out, it's my last video on Come On Homestead. I framed out this, I put the roof in, and I got it all kind of dried in for say. I'm using this door right here. I did not cut the other doors yet because I want to keep the wind down and the temperature. And you can feel such a huge difference in here with just this house wrap around here. But I actually think I mentioned it on one of the earlier videos. I've been in contact with a sponsor about some things for the uh, mountain here. And according to the tracking, it should be here today. So I switched gears just a little bit instead of milling siding. Um, I'm about to do something else. And you guys are going to get the first chance to see what's coming. So that's why I like this channel. I'm able to give y'all guys a little something, something special beforehand. Are you excited about showing them what's up? Are you excited? Well, as you can see, I got some metal corrugated deck right here, and that's part of the plan. I got bags of concrete. I got some tile mortar right there. Concrete board. Concrete board screws. Uh, that polymer stuff that you add to the thin set for the tile. And look at all the tile, guys. This is going to be for the floor of the shower. I think it'll go real good with the maroon or the mushroom color floor that I'm painting in here. And the reason why I'm going with corrugated metal instead of buying an insert, this will be the walls of the shower. Um, I want more of a rustic type look in here because all of the walls in here is going to be raw pine and it'll have a real good cabin feel. So I want it to be more of like a rustic type thing. My hope is, is as I use this shower, this metal will start patina in just a little bit. And whenever it gets to the right patina that I'm looking for, I'm actually going to do a light sanding on it and seal it with a clear uh, coat so it can't rust anymore. That way it has that rustic look to go with all the wood and stuff that's going to be in here. I think it's going to look phenomenal. Um, I'm excited about it. So that'll be the walls. I showed y'all the floors. And I got to lay out this today. All right here. The shower is going to be pretty big. I'm thinking it's probably going to be three foot by six foot. It's going to be a pretty good size shower. That way I can still come in here and wash Eclipse if I need to or something like that. And the goal is, is to bring the wall out a little bit and put a door, somewhat of a smaller door, not too small, where it's hard to get in and out and hard to get the dog in and out and stuff like that to give a shower. But I would like to make it to where I don't have to use a shower curtain, where it's just an open door kind of look, because the shower head is going to be over here. I believe that it'll be long enough that I can actually pull that off. But I have to pour the base today around here, so I need to get it laid out and pour the base. I've never built a shower from scratch. Um, I've 
retiled a bunch of them. I've patched stuff on showers and stuff like that, but I've never built one from the ground up. So this is all new to me. So I'm kind of learning as I go. I got a pretty good concept of how it needs to be, but I had no idea it was going to cost as much as it does to build a shower from scratch, especially using the corrugated metal instead of a whole bunch of tile and stuff like that. But it's expensive. It was almost $700 just for the material to build this, this shower stall, much less like uh, faucets and all that other stuff, fixtures, because they're expensive too. So I'm sure it didn't cost that a couple of years ago, but it definitely cost that now. So, but it is what it is. I didn't want to do an insert. Um, I could have very easily uh, went and got a tub shower combo insert or just a corner shower insert and uh, been okay with it. But I don't feel like that's going to fit the theme of the inside of the building. I think that will kind of stand out more. And uh, I don't want it to look modern and, and like new. I want it to look rustic and been here for a while. What do you guys think about that idea? Um, I'm excited about it. So definitely be uh, on the lookout. It definitely won't be the next video because I've already got another one that I'm working on editing now. And uh, y'all also got another sneak peek by me being in here. There's windows. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So y'all getting all kinds of extras. But uh, yes, there is windows in the tiny multifunction house. Um, I quit calling it a well house because it's turned into so much more than a well house. It truly is a tiny house. It's only 50 square foot smaller than my cabin. And basically it's going to have a kitchen, bathroom, and all of that. So it's a house. So it is a multi-purpose tiny house is uh, what I've dubbed it. It's a whole lot easier to say a multi-purpose tiny house than it is to say a well, solar, bathroom, outdoor kitchen kind of house, all that. Summarize it into a multi-complex. Yes. But yeah, there is windows installed now. That'll be the next video that's coming out tomorrow is installing the windows and a couple other cool little things that was going on around here. So we are making progress. Um, it is Thanksgiving week. So I don't know how many videos are going to come out this week. I'm going to try to, you know, put on my normal three. Um, but we'll see because I'm definitely taking Thanksgiving off. But that's the only day I'm taking off. Uh, Margarita will be here tomorrow. Um, and she will be staying until Saturday morning. And she is wanting to help me build the shower. So I need to get the uh, base poured today. So we actually have a good base to build the whole shower with because the design that i got is all going to be off that base so that's the project i'm working on today as soon as i get back from town with the propane i need to pick up a couple more supplies for the shower i've decided instead of just using the concrete board um, to the studs i'm going to actually uh, probably get some quarter inch plywood put that on the studs and then put the concrete board to that and that'll make it to where it's Real good and sturdy where if anybody pushes up against it or anything like that or actually slips and tries to catch herself, uh, it won't put a hole in it or mess anything up. It'll just make it that much sturdier. Hopefully, it ain't too expensive. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, but that's pretty much what I got going on this morning, guys. It's, uh, it's definitely cold. These little pools right here were full of ice this morning. As you can see, there's still ice. It's defrosting, but it's definitely cold. Phew. Yeah, I'm ready for some warm though. It's uh, like I said, thir uh, Friday and Saturday is supposed to get into the 60s. And as I told y'all earlier, when I bought the paint and stuff, I needed to get, you know, in the high 40s, 50s for the paint to be able to cure. And stuff properly so I've got a lot of work to do I want to get this shower base done and start working on the shower and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the floors why I have a couple of good days I think Friday and Saturday both said it's gonna get above 60 and it's only gonna drop down into the mid 40s at night so I think that's gonna be my best opportunity to go ahead and get the concrete floors painted so whew, we got a busy busy week ahead of us but uh, we're making progress. 
Um, it is cold right now and taking a shower is definitely a challenge for me right now. I'm pretty much doing it with boiling hot water in bowls. Um, so huh, what's coming in the mail today is uh, going to be a game changer here on the mountain. It's not going to be the final project um, for the shower situation, but it is a good temporary project that can keep me going until I get the bathroom completely done. And if I can get the shower stall and built and installed, it gives me a place to actually use it. I'm sure with me telling y'all that, y'all can kind of tell what's coming. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be very excited to be able to just uh, take a shower like a normal human being. It's been a while. It has been a while. I've been out here now for, uh, let's see here. I moved out here a week before April. So what is that, like eight months, something like that? So I have been truly off grid out here with no normal shower, bathroom, nothing like that for almost a year now. And uh, we're coming into another winter season and I do not want to deal with the winter like I dealt with last year, even though I came at the end of it. Um, there was still a whole bunch of 18, 20 degree uh, nights and stuff having to take showers and deal with that. And I've already dealt with it in the 22s this year. So I'm thinking uh, I wanted to start putting up siding like right now. And now that I got Uber back and wanted to start milling. But I think this right here takes priority. And uh, hopefully it only takes a couple of days to get it done because you got dry time and all that other stuff. I'm going to try to utilize my time the best as possible. But yeah, we definitely got uh, got our hands full to say the least. But I hope everybody is having a wonderful Tuesday and I hope everybody is prepping for Turkey Day coming up. Oh, Yard Bird Day. Come on with the Yard Bird. But as y'all can see, I'm in a pretty good uh, motivated mood this morning. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yesterday I wasn't. Anytime I got to go get gas... It's like I'm in a bad mood that day because it just costs so much money. But I'm working on something there too, guys. So stay tuned for that. But I hope everybody has a great day and is reaching out to family and stuff, getting excited about the holidays and getting ready to take a break and watch some football and eat some groceries and just have some good family time. But I'm going to get off here, guys, because I got a ton to do today. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And until we see each other again, guys, hey, hey, keep it real.